1987, director Gus Van Sant gained acclaim with his feature film, Malanocha, made for $25,000 from his own savings account. It won the L.A. Film Critics Award for Best Independent Film. After his next two films, Drugstore Cowboy and My Own Private Idaho, the New Yorker magazine called Van Sant one of the few really original talents to emerge from American movies in the 80s. To Die For, his new film, written by Buck Henry and starting Nicole Kidman, is a dark comedy about a small-town girl obsessed with becoming a media celebrity. And we're very pleased to have Gus Van Sant on this broadcast for the first time. Welcome. Thank Great you. to have you here. Tell me about this project, and because, and, and, A, using... Well, go ahead. Tell me about it. Um, well, Joyce Mann had wrote the book yeah. To Die For, which was, uh, I think, a few years ago it came out. And uh, it used... Uh, somewhat the Pamela Smart case, which right. was one of the first, um, I think, international press stories, you know, to to sort of um, inundate all this, you right. know, different right. kinds of coverage, magazine and TV and National Enquirer news. So um, it kind of influenced, I think, her story, which was not specifically the Pamela Smart case. It was uh, um, somewhat, you know, a story that she made up during the same period that that yeah. trial was going on. And uh, it came to my attention as a book through a producer named Laura Ziskin. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, Buck Henry was invited to write the screenplay, whom um, I had known. And we had pitched some stories around town in Hollywood for a while, not getting anything going. So we said, OK, we'll do it. And um, Buck wrote the screenplay. And um, it turned out great. The screenplay was Was great. it different for you than the kind of stuff you had done before? I mean, everybody has always talked about you from your Oregon location, doing films about, quote, low life and doing films about sort of, you know, whether Drugstore Cowboy or My Private Idaho, about two male hustlers and Drugstore Cowboy about a, an addict and his friends. Uh, the whole sense of you being, having a great, although not from there, but having a sense of, of street life and a sense of, of the dark side of life, was this taking off in a different direction? Yeah, this is more, um, say, from the sort of town that I grew up in, a small town in Connecticut of yeah. uh, you know, population of about 12,000 people and the um, social structure of a town like that. The upper middle class, the middle class, and the lower middle class. And the films I'd made prior to this, you know, the um, Malanoche and Drugstore in Idaho, were all films that, for you know, at the time I was, I was interested in and uh, were perhaps uh, originally generated by the fact that um, the street stories you didn't really have to spend too much money on. If you just went yeah. down onto the street, there was a lot of you could find the grit stuff, and, and you know? photograph it. Yeah. Whereas if you made a story like To Die For, just to get into some of the places that it takes place, like a mall um, or something like that, just cost money. So the, those films are always designed to be less. Money. Was it a hard sell for Nicole Kidman? No, no, she was very interested because of the subject. She was extremely interested in the type of story that it was. And uh, it was a very rich part. The screenplay, um, the lead character in the screenplay was extremely well written. So she was quite um, interested. Right. Set up this clip to die for. Uh, this is the plastic surgeon bit. Right. Um, well, it's, we haven't really gotten to know the lead, lead character yet and uh, what she's about. And here she's talking about uh, things that she wants to do in the future as a um, on-camera television personality or journalist. And she's meeting her future sister-in-law for the first time and her future husband. All right. Roll tape. Here it is. After Drugstore Cowboy, there, you hit, and everybody was saying wonderful things. I mean, they were saying you, you know, incredible things about you, as I referred to one uh, quote in the introduction. What was that like in terms of trying to live up to everybody else's expectation of you as sort of the, the best new independent filmmaker in the country and, and everybody take notice of who Gus Van Sant was? At the time? Yeah. Um, well, for me, it wasn't so much to live up to. It was to take advantage of. And so yeah. what I did was I took my toughest screen plans and thought, well, if, if there's a time that I can actually get this done, it's now. And uh, so I did my own private Idaho, which which was sort of an anti-living up to people's expectations. Although, you know, to me, that was a really beautiful story and one I wanted to tell. So Why, why did you want to tell that story? The story um, to it was male a, it was a story friends. that I had been writing for 15 years, for a long time, since I lived in Hollywood. It was really set, originally set in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard, about people that I would see on the street as I, you know, had lunch every day yeah. on Hollywood Boulevard. So I wanted, I mean, for me, it was a, a very closed 
uh, you know, set, setting for characters to exist on, just a street mm -hmm. and a shop mm -hmm. and a motel room. And um, it was, because it was about male street prostitutes, it was uh, something that people just did not want to touch. That's what I was going to say. The studio executive did not rush in right. to make a film But I could get, you know, hustlers. a smaller company interested in, in it yeah. through Drugstore Cowboys. So for me, it was an opportunity. And I wasn't so much too concerned about living up to an expectation because I figured at the time um, that, you know, people have different expectations. It's hard to actually pick one and live up to it. Yeah. Any, any desire to make big, you know, big budget films? Um, sh I have a desire to make them. Uh, at, so far in my career, I haven't really had a need to um, ha have, have that much money as for my budget because I suppose the subject has always been something confined. Small it, focus. Small focus, enough that you could make it for almost any amount. Um, but if it were something larger, I think it would, it would just be, it would be probably, I imagine, the same operation, just bigger, you know, more uh, space, more extras, more stuff that costs yeah. money. Uh, let's take a look, just dive for This is I Love This Song. Set it up for me. The song, oh, the song is uh, Leonard Skinner, um, Sweet Home Alabama. All right, and, for, go ahead. She, uh, this is a, a, a scene between um, Jimmy and uh, Suzanne, and Jimmy's played by Joaquin Phoenix. In. Okay. Roll tape. Here it is. Does it get easier when you have bigger budgets, or does it get more difficult? Uh, for me, it, it, and, uh, unless I'm involved with the production side, it gets the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same. But you do have, you, there are things that you tend to be able to do. You can, afford, you can just pick locations that would Perhaps, perhaps be expensive, you know, or mm -hmm. rally a bunch of extras for, mm -hmm. that would be expensive, but um, it's essentially the same. What did you think of kids? Um, it was great. I had, I had some, uh, to, I did some work You were the on executive it. producer. Yeah, so I, I, I have to say that I liked it. No, I loved it. I was really, I think one of the best films ever made. Do you really? Yeah. One of the best films mm -hmm. ever made? Yeah, I think so. Why? Well, judging from when I saw it, I just reacted, uh, I didn't quite know how to react. Yeah. You know, I was confused, and I just—it took me a whole day to figure out that it was a good movie. And anything that'll, you know, put you back that far is and is that powerful, um, and uh, and that new uh, an expression yeah. was almost like catching a cold than watching a movie. That um, you know, I just thought this has got to be, this has got to be it. Yeah, we tried to get the director to come on, and and he was away and out of here. And you know, in order to talk about it, because it created so much controversy when it first came out, you know, including, I think, a cover story in New York Magazine, maybe here mm -hmm. at the time. What's next for you? Um, well, I've written a, uh, a novel called Pink. And, um, What's Pink about? Pink, Pink is about um, uh, um, traveling in other dimensions and, uh, and, and filmmakers. Yeah. To die for is the film, Gus Vincent, the film director. We'll be right back. Stay with us.